Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Live Market Analysis USA edition. My name is Carl Kapalingo. I'm the market analyst over here at Think Markets, and it's a pleasure to be joining you as we go stateside to find the best trades, the best investments for your portfolio. The agenda is pretty simple for today. Find the Q&A window somewhere there in your Zoom application, if that's how you're watching me today, or if you're watching me on any of the streaming services, you should have a window there. Also, uh, type in the ticker code. Please make sure it's accurate. Ticker, please, not the name of the company. Always the best way to go. And I'll give you my best technical and fundamental analysis reader where possible. Uh, let's kick off by heading over to the charts. And I think we kind of need to start here. In fact, uh, well, we, we will stay here. Why, not? Why don't we stay here? Um, I don't have all my scratchings on it, but I don't need my scratchings. Oh, okay. If you're wondering what the scratchings are, they're the scratchings. And I want to talk about this big black candle because it's going to cast a, a big black shadow, so to speak, over everything we're going to discuss today. I'm sure many of our um, positions last night didn't do too well. Uh, what's it all about? We had a rumor uh, from one of the Japanese news agencies just before the close of trading last night, indicating that we could see a, an amendment to the yield curve control, YCC, uh, which uh, is where the uh, Bank of Japan tries to keep a lid on Japanese yields at 0.5% uh, on the 10-year JGBs. In fact, it's minus 0.5 to plus 0.5, but we know it's uh, nudging 0.5. Uh, that uh, popped Japanese yields. Um, the theory there is that if you're yielding more on Japanese uh, bonds and for, for a generation, over a generation, uh, you know, Japanese pension funds have invested overseas to get better yields because their yields have been at zero. So if we're starting to get better yields in Japan, potentially we're going to see uh, you know, this, this great big sucking sound, this great big draw upon global assets um, to repatriate back into yen to invest in those higher yielding Japanese government bonds. Now, where does the yield curve control? They might go from uh, 0.5 to 1%. They might go to 75 basis points. You know, yields in Japan are still going to be substantially lower than everywhere else, but you're going to get a bit of a, insert word, tectonic shift is the word I was going for. You're going to get a bit of a shift. Uh, and that's what we're paying for as investors. That's what happened to you last night. Uh, we also saw some stronger than expected US uh, economic data, particularly the GDP data there, and undid some of the good work from the dovish interest rate hike from the Federal Reserve earlier in the week. So we saw the US dollar rally, which is extremely frustrating because we thought we had a lid on that yesterday, but I didn't see that candle coming. That's a monster. And also you're getting some of that flight to safety uh, from that uh, potential move there from the Bank of Japan. That's all rumours. Uh, maybe potentially even as I'm talking, we're going to get what's actually happening. But if not, as I'm talking within the next... Um, hour or so. Uh, and that just killed killed gold. Uh, gold doesn't like rising yields in Japan, that's for sure. Um, your local gold stocks are getting belted today and maybe some of the ones we might look at today. Um, metals were down, soft commodities down as well, sharp, sharply. You know, uh, Anything priced in US dollars went the other way. So a uh, little bit of a curveball, a macro curveball thrown at us. I couldn't see it in yesterday's session. Do you know why I couldn't see it? Because I can't tell the future. I wish I could. It would make my life and your lives much easier. Okay, let's. that's sort of what's been going on. Let's see how it's impacted stocks. We're going to kick off with Perry. And uh, maybe Perry's the only one brave enough <laughs> to, to, to still be uh, bumping around shares at the moment. But let's uh, have a look here. EME is the first one. Oh, look at that. Uh, I'm guessing a company that was uh, maybe... Short Japanese bonds, perhaps. I doubt it. I doubt that's the reason. But what an amazing chart. And actually closing at 200. Um, so if you've never seen any of my sessions before, first place I look is uh, my trend ribbons, the 21 and 34 EMAs over here to tell me what the short-term trend is doing. Not only the direction of the trend, but it gives me strength of the trend as well when those um, when that ribbon is getting wider, the trend is stronger. Plus what we tend to find in the short-term only not all the time, but in the short term, we tend to find it uh, tends to support price in an uptrend and resist price in a downtrend. And then we, I look at my long-term trend. So the reason why they're there is just colors. When I'm scanning through a list, uh, and let's go through a list here, for example, of um, results. And this is an Aussie list I did earlier on today. Um, what I can do is get through that list very quickly 
just by looking at the colors. You know, the brain sees pictures, it loves colors, and I'm just looking for double green. Now, this is a bad example because, oh, well, there you go, it's not that bad. Uh, that one's come up on the list because of that big white candle, but I would discount it. I'd move past it quickly because I'm not seeing the double green, or at the very least, and forget that one, it's a, 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 a bond or something there. Uh, not seeing the double green, or at least, great segue, the amber. Uh, so this one here, AFG, at least I've got the amber on the long-term trend. So my eye has been drawn to here. I can see gr light green, big tick, and I'm not seeing um, dark pink tick. So I can get through a list really quick in New Zealand, obviously. Uh, I'm seeing amber up the top. I'm seeing green down the bottom. I know there's a few scratchings here, okay? I'm seeing light green. I'm seeing amber. So that's one I can shortlist. And if you don't believe me, ANZ, you've got shortlist here. I didn't finish the shortlist because I've was late for this spot, okay? But getting back to EME, the reason why we're, we're, we're talking about this is because I want to give you every time, every time we meet, I want to give you something practical you can take away for your analysis. And that's the beauty of this color system. You don't need to fill them in. Everybody says, hey, Carl, I can't fill them in on trading for you. Okay, as long as they're, they're green, uh, and you can Google how to make them uh, be green for up and, and, and red for down. It's not that hard. Um, it's that flicking through a, a huge list of securities, the color, and being able to shortlist very, very quickly, going from a big list to a small list. And that's why we're not going into the finer detail, which is the next place I go. I don't want to do the fine detail on my on on the starting list. I want to only do the finer detail once I've gone to a much, much smaller list. Because if I'm doing the finer detail on everything, it'll take me too long. Okay, I have to do the finer detail on the, small, on the smaller list. And for the finer detail, I'm looking at my peaks and troughs. I want to see rising peaks and troughs. It just tells me that I've got you know in, improving demand supply uh, fundamentals in the underlying market. And this is all very good here. Um, I like to see... Um, separation between the troughs and the second from last peaks. I know we've got a little bit of a compression there. I'm not sure why. Maybe there was something in the past that might have uh, been impeding this one. It doesn't look like it. Sometimes that just happened uh, and we get a breakout from there. But otherwise, the price action is good. What does good price action look like? It looks like this. In fact, that's great price action. What does not so good price action look like? Well, it's, it's the more the, of the overlapping. You can see both scenarios actually moved the same amount, but I'd be looking in terms of the one I want to buy at scenario A well before I even can contemplate scenario B. Okay, and we've got that here. And the final flourish is the candles. I want to see lots of white candles. Preferably, it tells me that um, it's in the basket of securities that the fund managers are just buying. You've got those algorithmic orders working to the system. Even when there's a bad day in the market, you can see the relative strength imperative here is green. That's good. That means we're beating the NASDAQ, uh, which is no mean feat, mind you. And then that final candle there is just a picture of demand. That is the perfect, uh, the perfect, uh, well, I'm going to say demand side candle. I will, I will write that demand side candle, uh, but it is just the, 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 the perfect showing of demand, uh, really, and it's excess demand, Darwin, is that's what we talk about uh, in the system. Uh, and why? what makes it even more perfect is, is the gap. The gap is uh, just so important here because it tells me that something really important that tectonic shift has occurred. So the gap and then the strong close. Um, so these are the things I'm looking for. At the end of all of these things, I will decide whether I like this enough to buy, hold, or sell. And I'll often um, give you percentages of just, just this is my experience. And you, if you, you're here, please understand that you're just getting my view of the world and it's not always right. Regularly, it's wrong. Uh, but in terms of my experience and the probabilities I would associate with a chart that looks like this, and maybe go back and do your own research and confirm for yourself, look, where have charts that have done very well? Where have they looked like this? And then what happened next? Okay, did they collapse after that? Did they keep going? Maybe they pulled back a little bit and then they kept going. But for me, this is just 100% buy. Uh, this is 0%. Uh, uh, well, it's uh, if you've got it <laughs> in brackets, then uh, by default it's one hundred percent hold, uh, and this would be zero percent sell. So if you if you did have it, um, I cannot see a single reason to sell this one right now, uh, and therefore I would add some risk to it. Uh, and this this is where it's up again. It's always up to you, but how much risk do you add? And for me. You know, I like to have this model of just uh, putting some skin in the game to get started. I don't know if this is going to be the best company. It could be the worst from tomorrow, but I want to put some risk on it. And I put enough on it that, uh, you know, uh, if if it 
Um, if it goes well, obviously I can add some more to it. It's probably not where I wanted to go with that sentence, but I don't put enough on it that I can't sleep at night. Now, if this continues to perform well, I will add more and add more and add more um, as long as it continues to perform well. If it stops performing well, then I'm out quick smart, but I also step out. Um, if we look at some other places where you could have added a third, I mean, this didn't need to be your first third, certainly their beautiful white candle near the green zone uh, coming out of that consolidation. That would for me is an obvious plus one third. I think this candle here is excellent. That's a plus one third. In fact, that candle there is very good, plus one third. This candle here is very good also. This candle here is magnificent. But if you got in here, you may well have exited that third and got back in here, if you get what I mean. So, you know, we're talking about this for the first time. Obviously, it's the first time we've looked at it here. It's plus one third. But don't think, well, Carl's just buying that at the top. No, there were many, many reasons to be applying exactly the system, the strategy I've just discussed with you. Now, I've discussed it in depth. I won't have to discuss it in depth again because I, hopefully if this is the first time you've ever listened to me and there's people always coming in, uh, you now understand how I do things. And I know it's frustrating for the people that have been here many times, but hopefully each time I re-explain it, there's something new in there. You go, oh, okay, you know what? I get that or I get that better. I'm going to, I'm going to just work that into what I'm doing. And don't forget, you were here for the first time, one time as well. So let's let the people who are coming in uh, get the benefit of that explanation. Now, where am I? I'm in the Refinitiv Icon spreadsheet. It's a product uh, offered by Thomson Reuters, Think Markets. Very, very kind to us all because they pay for this $2,000 US per month for me to have this. And I'm building it up, of course, and it's not working. There it is, thankfully. It's working for me now. But what we get is the broker consensus uh, this is how many estimates we have. Not many on this one. Clearly, it's not very widely covered. I don't know if you caught Microsoft earlier, but there was probably over 40 brokers covering. And Thomson Reuters, one of the biggest gatherers of financial data in the world, will survey each of those brokers and say, look, what do you reckon the revenue is going to be for FY23, for FY24, et cetera, et cetera. That's not working because I need to make those match up. And uh, and the various parameters there, of course. Uh, from there, uh, these are what we call consensus estimates. I've got historical also data in the bag. We're still waiting on some revenue to come through here. Uh, because it the way it updates, it updates from the top to the bottom. I'm not 100% sure if these are accurate. Um, so we might be in a bit of trouble on this one. I can't control uh, the, the data feed. Sometimes it's very quick. Sometimes it's very slow. Maybe we'll come back to this. My goal is for any stock today that we think we would, would want to buy, we can come back here and check the company valuation. Uh, apologies, this is, this is not my technology. Uh, you can see here, possibly, you know, I've been previously working away today to get my OSPIS notes ready. Sometimes, you know, the way computers are, sometimes a restart could uh, could fix this. It's an extremely temperamental program. Uh, I can't restart now. Sorry. So if we if if we are in a situation where all we can do is technicals, then that's where we are. It wasn't from me not trying to do it the other way. I think this looks really good as well, Perry. Uh, turnaround play here. Uh, it's one I would certainly look at through my scan. I can see light green. I can see amber. Okay. I don't have to see dark green. I just need to not see dark pink. If you get where I'm going with it. So that's a it's a bit of a psychological shift. There's a bit of a paradigm shift. You ordinarily would think, oh, Carl needs to see light green, dark green, short-term uptrend to long-term downtrend. That's not the case. I'm looking for two different types of setups. I'm looking for the EME, EME setup, which is bottom left, top right. Okay, these are what I call continuation patterns. You've already got evidence of excess demand in the system. It's clear. I'm looking to add risk on those. Change the screen. Thank you, Nick. You are a, a legend. Appreciate that. So we're talking about this here. We're talking about continuation patterns here. Double green. Now, the other one that uh, Perry's given us today is PDS, and that is uh, not double green, okay? So we've got green, but the amber is fine for me. It's something I can continue to investigate. I don't need to see double green. I just need to not see um, a, a dark red. So this is what we call a turnaround setup, okay? Clearly, the name turnaround means it's not bottom left, top right. We haven't seen a history of excess demand. In fact, we've seen excess supply, but through the amber, it's telling us that we've reached equilibrium and we're starting now potentially move back to move back to excess demand. Okay. Uh, so I don't mind this one. Uh, I think unless you are on it, you're probably going to wait for a little bit of a pullback to try and find it a little bit closer to the green line, especially in the environment we're in. 
Uh, a little bit of an upper shadow there, but not a deal breaker. Ideally, they close on the high, like the perfect candle we saw in that EME case study. But I don't mind it. Look, if you had it, again, I'd be 100% a hold. Um, I'm a little bit at a buy here. I can certainly see a reason to do it. If you knew something about this company, I don't. Uh, probably a mining services company. Uh, in terms of where the supply could come in and just helping me understand what the potential reward to risk on this trade is, I can see there's a massive amount of supply uh, historically here. Okay, uh, If you don't believe me, look at this candle. And that candle is the opposite of that beautiful white candle gapping up, closing on the high. This one is this big, nasty black candle. It's like the NASDAQ candle we saw last night. Okay, It indicates substantial excess supply in the market. Uh, now, the problem is, and especially if you see that occur on some substantial volume, uh, there you go. So a bunch of people uh, obviously got out here. That is a problem. But don't forget volume is buying and selling. This is where people get really confused about technical analysis and volume, and volume's importance in technical analysis. Oh, you know, something happened on, uh, you know, something went up on high volume, that's good. Uh, well, something went up on a high volume means something went up with a lot of people selling it. Yes, there were many buyers, but many people were selling. If it went up, it means that the, the, the selling was running away and the buyers were chasing after them. And that's a good sign too. Uh, but the problem for me here is that a bunch of people copped this stock at that 70 level. Um, they were buying here, not copying it, but certainly buying here, believing that they had a bargain on the basis that we were hitting that um, the dark green zone. So what I feel is that there are or well, there is a substantial uh, amount of latent supply up at this level. The people who copped it, okay, who's somewhere down here, down here, how do they feel, right? Okay, the in brackets, the ones, <laughs> the ones who copped it. <laughs> uh, now, the, the people who are bought in here, they're also feeling pretty awful. This area now represents their break-even. It doesn't represent everyone's break-even. It doesn't represent the break-even point for everyone in the market, but there are people who will look at that as a place that they can undo that horrible mistake and they will potentially supply into the market. Uh, now, does that mean that you can never go above that price ever again? No, that's just silly. We don't know what's going to happen there and we won't know until we get the candles. Until the candles start printing their black or white, we can't say whether it is actually... Um, an area of supply, but it's something we just need to be mindful of. And the reason why we're mindful of it is because we're trying to work out our reward to risk. So let's say we're getting in here, right? And we think we might have a problem there. We don't know, but we might have a problem there. And we need to consider where would my bug out point be? Now, I won't know price action. We might get price action like this, right? Which tells us to bug out much earlier than a logical stop point, which would go at least beneath that um, little peak there. That little peak previous point of supply should act as a point of demand. You've got a proper point of demand here. Maybe it stops down here, right? And I can't tell you where it's going to be. It's going to be based upon your risk tolerance. Maybe it's there. Obviously, the further away you go, the more uh, of a shock bout of excess supply you can withstand. But also, the further away you go, the smaller your position size will be for a fixed risk. I know that confused a bunch of people. What I'm trying to get at here is what's my reward to risk? This is called tradecraft, okay? Uh, we talked about EMA as I throw my mouse around. We talked about uh, EME, sorry, the first one. We talked about what a great setup that was. We didn't have to spend long deciding whether it was a great setup, but we didn't even talk about the tradecraft element. It was irrelevant. It was blue sky. What's your upside? Everything and anything. What's your downside? We'll work that out. Here, we, we look up, we don't see blue sky. We see a potential point of supply. So it's about understanding... Uh, what the reward to risk is, and then starting to weigh your setups on once you get to the end of that scan and the end of your tradecraft going, okay, well, I've got six setups that are blue sky. I've got one turnaround play with um, uh, you know 20% upside or two times uh, reward to risk. Uh, and I've got one turnaround play with only uh, one to one. Maybe the turnaround play with two to one reward to risk is a better uh, option for adding to your portfolio. And I always say, look, get some... Uh, continuation plays and continuation setups in, get some turnaround setups in. But this is now giving you an idea on how to compare and contrast those. When I talk about the quality of the setup, we talk about the quality of the opportunity. Um, I know that was a long-winded path 
to telling you, Perry, I like it, but I don't know if I like it enough to go plus one third. Hopefully, there was some value in that discussion for you. Uh, let us go to this one here. Uh, and this is a compulsory uh, plus one third for me. I don't know. It feels like it's high. Um, look, I don't know. Maybe it is. But I just love that candle. It, it, you know, again, it's, you've got the gap. You've got the lower shadow. And this is important, what I'm going to say to you now, because very often I hear uh, certain, and I will call them technical analysts for the time being, but certain te technical analysts will say, when you see that candle uh, at the top of an uptrend, at the top is such a silly way to put it, but within a, a strong uptrend, that's a, a sell signal. Um, it'll be called a hanging man doji because they've read it in a, a textbook. Uh, by Steve, uh, Steve, uh, is it Nissen? N I S O N was the the initial uh, guy who sort of started writing these Japanese candlesticks books, and I've got a few of his on my shelf as well. Uh, and in that it says hanging hanging man doji uh, bad news right sell. Uh, it's just just again I didn't want to really use that term uh, technical analyst because they're not. If you have read a technical analysis textbook doesn't make you a technical analyst and especially if you regurgitate rubbish like that this candle is a picture of demand it's pretty much all demand i should say pretty much because there was a great deal of supply in it at one stage so if we look at what happened here and this was a great chart before that i would have been buying on this candle with my ears pinned back right there we've got this huge pop huge gap on the open how do i know it's a huge gap well it's just the way japanese candlesticks works it must have opened here this is 100 percent the open okay that's just the way they work. Uh, then probably what happened, it might have gone up a bit, but I do know at some stage during the session it plunged. It plunged back to uh, fill the gap, hey? Another thing those quote-unquote technical, technical analysts say must happen, doesn't have to happen. Uh, it came down to fill the gap, supply, 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 and, that, and that's profit-taking. And we can see from the volume here, there was a great deal of profit-taking in the system, but there also must have been a, what? a lot of what? A great deal of people looking to buy that dip, and they bought it and they bought it, and they bought it, and they bought it, and they bought it. And some people were probably going short. Oh, this has gone up too much. You know, it's it's not good value anymore. And they were shorting it at the open uh, by the end of the session. Look what the, the real money, you know, the money that matters. Look what they did. This is a picture of demand. It doesn't matter where it appears in the trend. That is a buy signal for me, um, given the everything else. I won't go into all of the everything else again, but, you know, Double greens, great price action, great candles. Uh, this is a plus one third for me. So between EME and this one here, we've got the two most amazing setups to kick off uh, today's discussion. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I, I don't know what to do about this. It is retrieving. Ordinarily, by default, I'll restart before our presentation here and just just to sort of ward off this, this possibility. And I unfortunately didn't have the time to do that today. Sometimes it, it comes back if I... If I uh, do this and this is a, a server issue with uh, Refinitiv Icon it happens regularly trust me somebody who uses this every day uh, this is the norm this is not the exception and we're still retrieving there look I, in my experience it doesn't just start working again it generally requires some sort of uh, restart if somebody knows that well there we go that it started working Okay, let's do the analysis on this one. I've got 14 estimates, okay? 14 individual brokers. They could be, I don't know, but they could be. Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, uh, uh, UBS, for example, uh, Citigroup, all of the biggest of the big names out there with flaws and flaws in gleaming office towers in New York, probably, or Chicago, of analysts, the top 1%, yep, at Harvard or wherever, you know, wherever they're doing business, they these are the best of the best, the cream of the crop that they select and pay them hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to do this analysis uh, coming up with this data here. And this is why I place some importance on it, okay? Uh, I think they can do better analysis than us. If you think you're going to come to a number, right, that's going to be more accurate than these, these people, I think you're kidding yourself. And this is why I don't do fundamental analysis. I can't beat these guys at their game. But what I can do is, much like with my um, my technical analysis, is follow the trend. What's the trend here? Okay, not a great trend for us in terms of wanting to buy this. If this matters to you, $317 is their average price target of those 14 brokers. That's about 11% below the current price. But if we look at their ratings, 
Does it get any better? Not well, look, one strong buy, four buys, that's good, but 11 holds, one sell, one strong sell. This is an extremely polarizing company. Next place I like to go out of all of the numbers here is the EPS line. Ultimately, that's what shareholders are uh, getting the benefit of. Uh, no, and I want to see a bottom left, top right sort of trend here. 9.42, 11.19, dipping to 9.94. That's a pandemic year. We'll forgive it, that one. But then to 12.60, 14.07 looks good. And looking forward, that's the most important thing. Actually, it's very, very good there. Um, look, certainly bottom left, top right, but the order of magnitude is 8% compound annual growth rate over the next three FYs. And that's pretty good. It's about market average. If we can get this at cheaper than the market uh, PE, then we've got a bit of a bargain on our hands. And we're not getting it at a huge bargain here. We've got a 20 paying. Uh, if we look at the three years uh, forward PE here, the median is going to be 20.1. It might even actually include that one. Because this year's not actually finished yet. Uh, 20.1. And for 8% growth, it's not knocking my socks out. No, not knocking them out either or off. And that's why my spreadsheet's saying uh, not the greatest value opportunity here. It's not so bad to tell me that I need to avoid it, but it might have surprised a few of you. With a chart like good, that good, maybe this one, um, the valuation isn't as supportive. Does that prevent me? Does it deter me from going and adding and throwing my money on that chart? No, it doesn't, because I'm a pure technical analyst. At the end of the day, this stuff is interesting for me, but it actually doesn't make any difference to what I do. Now, the good news is because these have updated, even though the historicals haven't, they're coming through, I can actually do the valuation on this one. But we don't have a lot of forward-looking data. We've got 9% compound annual growth rate uh, at 19.6. It actually looks pretty reasonable. And whilst the brokers are saying that we're currently at fair value, but to be fair, not many brokers here. I know there's two here, but we've got uh, three somehow ratings, uh, one strong buy, one buy, one hold. My model is saying, actually, you know what? The, the growth is pretty good for what we're seeing there. So uh, we can say there's a bit of upside in it. So there's nothing really preventing me uh, from buying this one. Having said that, we've got very little data. We've got very, very little data. So you would take that with a, with a, bit, of, a bit of a pinch of salt. Okay, let's head to the next one here. And you, hopefully uh, this marries well with you. Maybe this is the way you like to do things that... that, that that convergence of technicals and fundamentals. Okay, uh, This one looks amazing. Again, there are so many places within this trend to buy. This here is the perfect continuation pattern setup. Oh, wonderful, beautiful white candle closing on its high with, you know, it's, it's big compared to the previous candles. It's decisive and it's near the light green zone. That's really good. And then I would have had another reason to buy it here. Uh, one to buy here, one to buy here, and one to buy here. And I'm just showing you all the points previously where you could have, could have added one third to this one. Uh, look, Perry, I don't know. It's, it's, is it just a bit of a ways away from my light green zone? I didn't quite close at the high, but geez, I can't tell you not to do it. I can't tell you not to do it because it's the epitome of demand. Maybe you want to wait for a pullback first, okay? But otherwise, that looks amazing. I can't, I can't fault it. And if I can't fault it, I, I need to be able to tell you that, you know, I think there's reason to add some risk to it. Um, because it is one we are considering. Let's quickly head back here. And uh, there you go. You can see it's just kind of complete server response. If you didn't believe me that it's not me and it's not my technology, server response failed. Thanks, uh, Thomson Reuters. Maybe we need to pay a bit more than $2,000 US a month. CVLG, uh, let's try that one. We might have some luck here, we might not. Okay, we'll come back to it and head back over here. This, of course, oh, no, it's not coming. Uh, puts me at risk of not changing the right screen. Let's go to, thank, thank you very much for those, Perry. Always appreciate your input in these sessions. Hello, Nicola. Nicola says, good morning, Carl. Can you run your turnaround eyes over AVDX? I certainly can. Oh, I think this is more than a turnaround already, Nicola. This actually looks really good. Last night's candle wasn't great, was it? But hey, we've got so many black candles last night. I can certainly forgive that. It doesn't mean I'll be adding risk tonight, though, because I still like to add on a white candle. But I think this is very, very good. Uh, just want to have a quick look here. You can see it very much turnaround play. So it's trying to get past this point here, which is the Oh, that's not quite, I was thought, that point. Let me just draw a line on it. Okay, let me draw a line on it. That one, oh, the other way, yeah, there we go. That's the one I wanted to see. Uh, and sometimes you can't see them from that. That's that one there. Okay, so no problems there. What's this one here then? 
Let me just draw a line across this one. I'm just looking for the previous points of supply, Nicola, and that's what you kind of have to do in these um, turnaround plays. Uh, and they're probably one up there, and maybe there's a bit of um, stuff here to deal with as well. And if they're miles and miles away when we get back here, not a problem. Uh, certainly, the what that this one's fine. Okay, and then and they're not going to be straight. This is I'm not. This is not scientific, obviously. If I had more time, I'd be taking more care on these. A uh, little bit of a point of supply there. Uh, clearly, that's the most that's the most recent one. Uh, otherwise, it's fine. So what we're looking at here is uh, light green. That's a big tick. That's turning around. That's a big tick. Um, have we broken above the zone? In fact, it's kind of here is where I really like them. Look at this. Look at that. That's a beautiful candle down there. Uh, we, we we break out. We come back. We, we test. We hold. We held the, the short term here. We didn't even come back and test the hold along. That's good. Uh, and then here, here's another great little candle here as well. Okay, uh, showing that we weren't too afraid of this supply zone. Eventually, we found a bit of supply there. Uh, look, it's all good. No no complaints at all. Happy holder here. Um, let me just give you some idea on where it might start to be, not be as good. Uh, certainly, I don't want to see it come down through through that point of um, demand that point of demand. And then we've got an old point of supply could act as a point of demand. So look, I don't want to see it do this sort of thing uh, and end up sort of beneath here. I think that would be uh, maybe time to just say, look, this this could be anywhere in, 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 in 10 years time, but in the next 10 weeks, it might take a bit longer than I thought. I just want to get my money out and just go do something better with it for the time being. And I can always come back and look at this one. Okay. But for now, happy holder. I don't think I'm going to go to the fundamentals on that one. I don't think I need to at this stage. Uh, NIO is coming through from, uh, and that's a very odd one. Uh, that's because it's not the right one. So let me do this and do this. And this is where Amy Broker conspires against me sometimes. Uh, this one is for Daniel, and it looks very good. Another turnaround play. It's Sometimes I get a little bit frustrated by the fact that uh, we haven't got above the... Uh, the uh, amber zone uh, and you get signals here that, and as good as they look I just for me I can't take them so I need them to get above it and that's just the model but there are some nice um, signals through here the short term trend is up the amber the long term trend is going through amber these are higher risk plays the fact you're turning around you're not continuing it's a higher risk I'd be watching for this so pull back to here up here and in the light green zone, which is going to appear magically on your screen in just a sec second. There's the light green zone, the right candles. And if I saw these candles, or the right candles, they look like this. And that's going to change very soon to this. So if I saw that candle, which is uh, the Marabozu, or its best buddy here, some people might call that a pin bar or a hammer. Okay, either of those candles in there, happy days, uh, and I could do something about it. But I just don't think, based upon what I can see right now, I'm going to rush out and buy it. But it's looking far more prospective today than it has in a long time. Uh, this one is also for Daniel XPO. Uh, amazing, looks great. Let me just get my default zoom going here. I just want to check, make sure yeah, it's all it's all blue sky from here. Uh, I don't think last night's candle was all that sinister to be to be honest and we, we've seen some really nasty candles from yesterday uh, so not enough to prohibit me from adding a third on the basis that everything else is just so amazing but once again hopefully you agree that we ideally we can find them you know and i know it's i know it's I, you you hate it when i do this but i point to all the past um wonderful places where everything i tell you every every week has occurred um Let's just let's just see. Give it give it another candle and another another lower shadow, another you know little white candle, and then maybe you could have a go. But just being respectful of the current market environment, uh, maybe this one deserves another candle. That's all I'm saying. But otherwise, it's nine point nine out of ten. Uh, Daniel, keep an eye on that one. Uh, now I've got one coming through on the Twitter. Adonis actually, uh, and Blackstone, BX. And it's one, you can see here, uh, plus one third on this candle here. So went up, hit the point of supply, and it's come back down. I think 
uh, we have a pretty nasty candle here. This obviously supply candle confirmed by this. Uh, this in itself is not enough to panic. Uh, this and this together start to frustrate me. And then if we're starting to close beneath that little area there, then it might be just managing a little bit of risk, taking a tiny bit off the table, because otherwise that's still good and that is turning around. But my view on this is it is more likely to go down than it is to go up over the next few sessions. Okay, probably coming back into that 100, finding uh, some demand down here. Remember the candles I just talked about, those demand side candles, and then popping, popping back up off that. Uh, if you are so inclined, exiting a little bit, one third of, of this one third, okay? Uh, and it depends on how many shares you bought. You might not have enough shares to do that. And then you might say, well, I'm just going to hop out and I can always look at it again when it gets down here, okay? And if it if I hop out and it's a big white candle the next day, then I just have to commit to giving up the $6 on the two shares that I had, which is $12 of my life and buying it back, okay? Or whatever it might be. Uh, if you bought three shares here, you could easily get out one share and, and then hold the two and see how you go, looking for other signs to either exit or enter. But that candle, confirmed by that candle, it's not this candle alone, it's this candle confirming that candle, um, concerns me. And then that little lower shadow there and the little uh, trough that it is, it is a point of demand because we've got a higher high and a higher low on this side and lower highs and lower lows on this side. That is a POD. I better label it. Uh, close beneath that would see me just as a precautionary measure managing a bit of risk on that one. But otherwise, it's fine. It all depends on how you uh, how you want to apply my concepts. Okay, but just telling you how I would do it. Uh, let's go to David for Baba, which again, we can see is much more of that turnaround play. Uh, over here, look at this. I reckon we talked about it and I said, I want to see it do this first <laughs> because we've pushed through the long-term zone. We've gone amber, we've gone light green and amber. We've come back, we've pulled back and I want to see it bounce off this with good price action, good candles, and then we could buy it didn't do that. It fell straight back through it, got impeded by it here. And this is the first time since then, David, that it's actually started to show signs it might want to have another go. Uh, I actually thought it looked very good on this candle here. It's looked very good on this candle here, but we can see the problem, right? The problem is it's really struggling to get through. Uh, last night's candle was big, was, oh, wasn't big, but it was a black one for obvious reasons. And then con uh, it's really confirming the supply that's in here. I think it, this needs a bit more work. Um, what I want to see and I think we can be patient on this one, is just wait for this. Okay, what's, what's the hurry? Uh, if it's going to go, surely there's more in it than if we just wait for a nice white candle, closing on the high, uh, preferably even above 100, and certainly within the zone of influence of this point of supply over here. Okay, so we just want to see it close even in there, just to say, look, I'm not, so, I'm not too worried about this point of supply. Uh, is that going to be the best turnaround you, you can find in the market? I'm not so sure. If it is, then that's my analysis. If it's not, then maybe there's somewhere else you need to be looking. Maybe we're going to see where that is today. Oracle, you can see how the model works here. I'm glad I got one where the model has worked because you can see uh, in these sessions, I've said plus one third, uh, plus one third, plus one third, plus one third, and sometimes a little bit flippant throwing up, throwing up plus one third, and sometimes uh, even when things have gone up a lot, uh, you might go, well, that surely that can't work out, surely. But look, that's how that looked. Looks, it's looked like so many we've looked at today, EME, um, LII, and you might be saying, well, I can't buy that because it's gone up too much. Okay, well, maybe it has. I don't know. Maybe it hasn't. Uh, we do have some issues here just in that, you know, you could have been just managing a bit of risk maybe after that day, uh, just because the big black candle always frustrates me. Um, maybe through here, just on the on the fact that you've gone through that point of demand, you, you shouldn't if momentum is continuing to the upside. Um, but otherwise, look, I think you're still holding some on that basis. I can go a hold. Uh, I would be concerned that uh, if it closed beneath this level here, and that would be a manage my risk moment. Uh, so close less than and go minus one third. Until then, I can hold it. Is it lighting the world on fire? No, it. To buy it, you would need a couple of white candles of the description I just gave you in the last example. That one's for Mark. Happy holder in the meantime. Uh, Nicola asking about MAT, which is Mattel for the Barbie movie. It's had a little bit of a boost, hasn't it? Uh, not a great 
session last night, uh, this is uh, this is a, a candle to be concerned about because, again, a lot of hype around the movie, maybe a lot of hype around Mattel earnings as a result. Uh, big breakout last night at one station. This is why I tend, I trade on the close, not uh, you know, on how a candle looks in the middle of the session. I say wait for the close because at one stage, this was a big white candle. This was exactly the candle you want to see, uh, closing above this point of supply, closing above this point of supply, and really just making the most beautiful continuation pattern. But then the supply came in. It came in uh, big time. You can see from the volume as well. Uh, and I would say sort of um, there's a bit of elevated volume here. We are seeing a real battle uh, between the long-term uh, detractors and the, and the new-term uh, believers. And I think the detractors won that battle last night. Uh, so absolutely on that candle, uh, this would be an avoid for me for the time being. And I would need to see it reinstate uh, its demand side credentials, Nicola. And I think you know what I mean there. We need to see a bunch of white candles and or a bunch of white shadows. Uh, and then I could consider it again. It's got the benefit of um, holding this. And that's uh, at least got amber turning up in the meantime. Uh, but not one I would run out and do tonight. VCEL. Uh, look, a bit of a slow and steady trend. It's holding that trend. It's not exciting me. It's not knocking my socks off. I, it, we talked about uh, price action and, you know, it, yes, it's going up, but it's going up with this real sort of overlapping sort of nature. And it's not just been doing that recently. It's kind of been doing that um, for much of the last six months. So I don't think we've got really clean price action here. And the candles are a little bit too uh, much alternating black and white for me. But it is uh, an uptrend, no doubt, here and here. It's just one of those slow grinding uptrends. It's a pass for me, but uh, if you had it, I could see a path to holding it, assuming it's the best thing you can do with your money at this point in time. Uh, let's try and find some other things that might be the best thing you can do with your money. Nicholas also got DHI, which this is a much cleaner chart. You can see the price action is uh, the separation between the peaks and uh, the last troughs and the second from last peaks is there. Uh, this candle's a little bit concerning. Lower shadow maybe saves it, uh, but not surprising. We pushed into the high of this candle, which where, which is where supply has begun to manifest itself in the market. And then we've come back down two uh, black candles in a row there. Not great. Um, if you've got it, I can hold it. I think it's, well, well there you go. I was going to say, I think it's one we've covered in the, in the past. I can't remember every stock we've covered in the past. I don't have a photographic memory. I'm sorry. Uh, but you can see we've talked about adding some risk to this in the past. Uh, and there are other many wonderful looking candles here to do so. These are all plus one third candles. I'm not sure if we would have gone plus one third on this one, just on the basis that the, the pullback was so severe, but 100% here, here, and here, all, all good for me. Um, you might say, hey, Carl, if you added one third here, you're not doing so well right now. Probably not, but you're doing really well on all of those other ones, aren't you? Um, I'd be concerned if it closed beneath here. That would cause me to manage my risk. I'd be concerned if I saw, because we're, we're already getting um, lower point of supply here. You know, if I saw consistently black candles and upper shadows through here, I might just say, look, you know, this one's losing some momentum. Uh, I'm going to uh, jump ship. And the analogy I like to use is imagine we're in the Melbourne Cup and we're the only jockey among all the horses. The horses are all going gangbusters uh, around the track and we're the only jockey and we've got the ability to jump from horse to horse. You know, and as the race is going on, some horses, you know, they, they get all excited. They've got a bit of energy, a bit of boost of energy. They start running a bit faster and we jump on that horse. And then that horse is oh, it's starting to tie. It's, getting, it's losing a bit of momentum. Uh, but another horse is starting to, to make its run. So we just jump onto that horse. Uh, and that's the ability we have as just individual investors uh, with all the technology and access to markets we have at our fingertips with CFDs, literally just to be that jockey that's just jumping from horse to horse. And I know it sounds a bit flippant, but it's just about having small amounts of money in the best momentum at any time and not getting so caught up. If something isn't showing momentum, that jockey's just going, well, I'm just going to jump onto the next horse. Uh, let's go to Meta or Barry. Uh, it's interesting, you know, ordinarily last night probably would have been a good candle if not for the wipeout everywhere else. But it is a black candle, and I think you need to uh, take some note of it to heed it. It's what it's telling us. Uh, has it occurred at a, at a place where we would expect it to occur? Probably not. You know, probably up more. Well, actually, it's not that bad, is it? Yeah, it's getting close to a bit of a point of supply. Uh, the, we did have a little minus 130 here. You can see all the places you could have added back. Um, I'm just going to go... Uh, but see, if you blend the candle, you've still got a half up, don't you? I don't like the candle, but I'm going to... 
just give it the benefit of the doubt on the basis of everything else and that little gap. Uh, I'm going to go hold on Meta, but it's obviously needs to, it obviously needs to be watched quite closely. MSFT, which we uh, again plus one third here. The fact it's gone straight through that and uh, this here, I think uh, the jockey is looking at this and thinking, well, maybe there's a better horse to jump onto. Uh, and for me, the move beneath here is the point you do it. So that would be minus one third. Okay, right there. And last night's candle, I think, confirms another minus one third. I can't see too many redeeming features in that. It's losing momentum, and therefore we're uh, getting a bit out. And I think I, all I would have remaining this, I know it's blasphemy, it's Microsoft, and you know, 20 years' time it's going to be higher, it's got AI, whatever. Yeah, okay, maybe. Uh, but I'm not interested in 20 years. It's my style. Okay, I'm interested in the next 20 to 20 trading sessions. Um, one third remaining on that one. And if you don't like what I do, um, there's no need for you to listen to me. Uh, we can do, see, this is the thing. If you want to go long term, uh, just do that. Okay, and if you're going long term, you'd be getting out anyway on the basis of that candle and that candle. I know it's hard to see, so let me go here uh, and go MSFT. And it's it's very subtle. But all you have to do, it's the same candles. Everything's the same. What, what is different? Nothing's different here, right? That's it. Check the market once a week. Don't check it once a day. How much easier is life now? And now you're not interested in the next 20, uh, 20 days. You're interested in the next 20 weeks. Uh, if you want to be interested in the next 20 months, just look at a monthly chart. Check the market once a month. Nothing changes with my analysis. All the strategies are the same. The, the indicators work exactly the same. The, the trend ribbons, everything. Uh, that one's for Jill. Uh, Barry's uh, done uh, Meta. We've done that one. PWR, getting close to the end, everybody. Uh, so don't type any more in. Streams are going to come to you in a second. Uh, it looks great. If you've got it, hold it. I guess it's one we've talked about before. I can't see any plus one thirds on the screen, but I can see reasons to go plus one third all over the place. So if you do have it, I'm a happy holder. Very mild pullback last night. I don't think there's anything in those last two candles that are so sinister. It's not like Microsoft. Um, this is a happy hold through here. I Just watch. Watch, watch for a close. Uh, less than here, and then uh, breaking probably. But until then, give it some room. That's that's no issues on that one at all uh, for you, Phil. Uh, would I buy it? Uh, look, I'm not far away. Just give me one white candle, and then I could happily buy it. CMPR, this one is for Har Haraju. And that's a very nice candle at the end. And consider how bad everything else was. That's a very nice candle. Didn't quite close on the high. Maybe you want to wait just for one more white confirming candle. But... Uh, I just can't see any reason why I can't do this. So I'll go plus one third. Uh, now, I didn't quite get to the end of everything. Uh, Colin we'll, might uh, tackle that one another time. Ask that question again. It's about points of supply. I've just got Osby's pinging me, telling me that my spot's coming up. Um, it's a no on that one for me, uh, Max. Uh, actually, I'm pretty sure you're in it. You've asked me about this one before. Uh, I'd go minus one third on the basis of that candle alone because I don't like it. I know it sounds, oh, Carl, the trends. No, I just don't like it. I'm sorry. I'm going to get out a third, and I've still got two thirds. Okay, so that's just the way I feel about it. Uh, CCL for Kirsty. I can hold it. Just watch uh, under here. I think you've asked me about this one before, so I'm guessing you're on it. I don't want to see it close beneath there. NCLH. Uh, let me type it in here, and it'll work. NCLH. Uh, same deal, same stock. Different stock, of course, same business. And ah, so yeah, we've got the Holy Trinity there. This one looks the best of them. Uh, so happy holder there. I know you can't see what it is, but I'm pretty sure that's Royal Caribbean. Yes, there you go. That's the best one. Uh, that looks great. So happy holder there. Would I plus one third? I'm very close to it. Maybe just that upper shadow keeping me off. But uh, that is the best of them. CRWD. Uh, I could squeak in at a hold, but I think I feel that there were many places to get out of this prior to that. Uh, but I'll squeak in at a hold, Glenn. Uh, INTC uh, looks fine, actually. That one looks fine. Uh, and a nice big white candle would see me adding some risk to that. Adonis, I've done your BX. And uh, thank you, thank you. And underneath this, and um, IXJ, only because uh, you asked me nicely there, Rahman. Uh, looks fine if that's the one you're after. Okay, I'm not sure if you're talking about there might be one in Australia, but this is all US stocks. Uh, I, I wouldn't buy it on the basis of that last candle. Looks okay. 
um, watch for further black candles. All right, I need to uh, pull the pin there. Sorry about that, but um, you'll get some correspondence to me from me about maybe moving this session to after the Osby spot for obvious reasons. I just want to try and keep it within people's lunch break. That's all. Uh, anyway, it's hard for me to move. It's harder for me to move the Osby spot. Uh, but let me know your feelings on that. Uh, ping Nick. Okay. Uh, that's how you join the other ones. If you're not a client of Think Markets, well, you should be because we are the good guys in the Australian broking scene. We've got everything you need to trade, $8 flat rate uh, trades for Aussie shares. But we do have those US shares you can trade with us, commission-free. I mean, it's the most amazing concept, trade US shares, commission-free, and we've got all the big ones. I can't say we've got all of them, but we've got all the big ones, probably most of the ones we saw today. Uh, and if you're a small investor, trying to put small amounts on many um, companies, which is the way my methodology, commission-free is so essential. You've need, you need to find a way to do that. Uh, market leading spreads, of course, on everything else, commodities, foreign exchange, crypto, award-winning broker. That's why you come with us. We keep winning them. We have great platforms. We have great customer support, and you can talk to us anytime you like. Thinkmarkets.com. .au, or if you're watching me from anywhere around the world, uh, your local jurisdiction. Uh, if you're watching me on any of the streaming services, hit subscribe to stay notified of my video updates. I do come out a few times a week and make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Really important to let me know you like what I'm doing so I continue to do more of it. Apart from that, it's been a pleasure chatting with you today. Hopefully you learned a bit. I certainly enjoyed the session. All the best until we catch up again. Bye-bye for now. Before you run away, just note that everything we've discussed today is general in nature, has not taken into account your personal financial circumstances or particular needs before acting upon that advice. You should consider it carefully or seek the help of a financial professional. Please press pause right now and read the rest of the disclaimer. It is crucially important. Uh, hit us up on um, any of our contact numbers to ask us any further questions or download a product disclosure guide or FSG.